serpentine, zigzag, zigzag, oh, right. serpentine, serpentine. <laughs> zigzag, zigzag metal. We're going to zigzag back and forth, serpentine. Yes. yes. Hi, everybody. It's me, Jennifer from Little Metal Foxes and Julia, also from Little Metal Foxes. Hello. Hello. So yeah, so today we're following up on our uh, continued uh, experimentation with the zigzag crimpers and um, things that go zigzag. So we have found um, after, if you missed the last one on the zigzag mill, go back and watch that one so you can sort of see us demonstrate this one in particular, talk more about this one's particularities. Um, but um, in the meantime, we ended up getting um, uh, this little guy, which is an awesome little zigzagger. There's one in this uh, maker's kit that is like, uh, I think by the same manufacturer, that is like six of these, like well, stacked yeah, up. It's like, like three of them. Yeah. Yeah. It's like three of them with two different gears on each one. Right. So it right. actually has six different sizes. So, right. and these are on Amazon. You can get those there. Julia, right. can put the link they're, they're the designed for paper. Um, and so they're all plastic. Yeah. So they work okay for filigree wire, we discovered, yeah. which is pretty thin. Yeah, with the, for bezel wire. Right, bezel wire. Was the filigree wire didn't really work that great? Um, the filigree wire was a little thin for uh, some of the zigzag stuff. But the... Um, when you say the, thin, what do you mean? A little narrow or a little... Um, yeah, it was just a little too thin for a lot of the, because I'm going to be using this for, um, for filigree and mm -hmm. for filigree, it was a little, little small, a little thin and light. So the for waves. cloisonne, for cloisonne, it would be great. So the okay. cloisonne wire was a little thin and light for this. The, um, uh, like bezel wire works better. Um, if you're doing, uh, like a 18 gauge milled flat. This is a little light. That's a little weak. When you say it's a little light, what do you mean? It didn't make the waves deep enough or? It was, you know, it was a little weak. It just kind of, I mean, this is plastic and it was like, as it was going through. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I mean, this basically is like a kinder egg <laughs> toy. Um, and it's, all, these are only like six bucks, but if you want to do like experiment with a little zigzag on your vessels, some texture, um, it's great for like wire, like bezel wire or very th fine wire, uh, especially for like cloisonne wire, if you need a right. zigzag. Something so, flat though, flat wire. This is not oh, yeah, yeah. wires through. Right, yeah. right. So this one can wire, be she's about talking about like round wire that she ran through the rolling mill and made it flat. And then she ran it through that little guy. Right. Where'd you go? Right. Uh, <laughs> well, I wanted people to see your your yes. tool, so I, I spot it you. Yeah. So this one's really great for for little stuff, lightweight stuff, um, and for six dollars, you know, if you're just doing a couple of them and experimenting, this can be, you know, a great six dollars. And these are available on Amazon, um, as are the the bigger version of this that has like three separate like little uh, gear boxes. Um, and each of them stacked like too high. So you've got like six variations of the same little thing. And so this is kind of like the medium size uh, for that. Um, this one, uh, Julia, what did we decide? Yours was how much? Mine was like 40 and yours was like, no, mine was 27, 40. 26 or something and like mine that. Mine was like 45. Yours was like 40, but they were are basically identical tools, right? <laughs> yes, um, they are. They are. However... Um, and this one has like four different um, gears on it as well uh, that have uh, the little, there you mm -hmm. go, that have the little gears on them. Um, you should be showing this. You've got this a little more close up. Um, you've got your document camera. But this one is great for doing delicate stuff, thin stuff. So if you're working with a very fine gauge, that one works pretty well. But right. and we showed you guys what that looks like in the other video. So moving right. on to the current one. So, uh, uh, uh. so this one is a paint ringer. Right, it's a tube ringer. A tube ringer, paint tube ringer. Right. And it's used for like wringing the paint out of tubes for a lot of painters will use this. And- Or tooth, uh, yeah, so when she says painters, she means like fine art painters, not house yes. painters, right? No, no, no. Those are bigger tubes. <laughs> so. yeah. 
So Finger this ringer. one, we got two different ones. So Jennifer and I each got one. Wonder Twin Powers activate. Wonder Twin Powers activate. <laughs> um, so Jennifer's yeah. cost, I think, less than $10 on Amazon. It was eight. It was eight. See, it was less than 10. I was not wrong that it was less than 10. And mine is made by the Gill Mechanical Company in Eugene, Oregon, and it cost uh, in the neighborhood of $40, right? And yours was recommended by? Uh, this one was recommended. There's a woman who wrote, whose name I can't remember right now, who wrote the book on metal corrugation, and she recommends that in her book. And then there's also a book by a fellow named Jack Berry called repetitive microfold forms using an industrial tube bringer, small scale applications for jewelry and sculpture. And this book, he recommends this tube bringer as well. He recommends so, yours, that specific one. This from... specific one from McGill, from Gill, sorry, Gill, G-I-L-L, Mechanical Company in Eugene, Oregon. And so I got this on Amazon, but I got it from the PMC shop, right? Right. Um, so that version is steel. It's a heavy duty one. It's great. Right. Um, the the handles a bit sections different. on the handles at the bottom. Yeah. You know? If you're planning to roll. So this paper, this was all about rolling sheet through it. If you're planning to roll sheet through something, I think the beefier one, that's the, that's because I think yours is mostly aluminum, even the handles. So the beefier one would probably be better for you, the more expensive one, if you're planning to roll sheet. But if you're only rolling filigree wire, that 10 I, puppy that she's got in her hand, honestly, I think it's going to work better. And we're going to go, we're going to show yeah, you why. Mine, mine was rec recommended by no one. By no one except <laughs> Jennifer. Re Jennifer is now recommending it. I am recommending it because, and this is why, Julia, um, although mine uh, feels like aluminum and it's a little bit lighter weight, I think our rollers are exactly the same when yeah. we looked at them side by side. 15 millimeters in yep. diameter. And, yep. Yeah, they, they are exactly the same. And I so think the I, rollers on both of them are both aluminum. It's just the frame on this, I think, that's steel. Right. So mine are more agile, first of all. Second of all, I tested this out with um, with like 24 gauge uh, or 26, uh, 24 gauge uh, copper sheet that was annealed. And ran it through and I was able to double corrugate it really nicely. So if you're working with something that is but um, works even for sheet, right? Yeah. So if you're using it for something like enameling, like the microfolds like that, mm -hmm. um, this would actually work really well. And you can do sheet in there up to probably what? Uh, oh, I think it's like two and a half, it's like two and seven eighths inches. So, I don't even go you know, any wider you're not losing anything. If you start with the $10 one from Amazon, if you decide that this is your thing and you're going to do microfold forming or you're going to do enameling on corrugated metal or whatever, that and your and that one, the $10 one is, you know, bending or something, then you can move up to this. But it's a great place to start. You know, I mean, like you're not, it's like you would only change if something, if it breaks, but if it's $10 right. and it breaks, right. so what, right? Yeah. I mean, they, they are almost identical in every way. One yeah. of the differences is the Don't handle. Don't the money, buy the cheap one. Yeah, one of the differences is the handle. Mine fits into the, um, my vice a little bit differently. Right. And the reason that that was important is because um, I can actually set a couple of chopsticks in here. Or Popsicle sticks. Yeah. Popsicle sticks. Oh, wait, so hold it up again without the popsicle sticks so people can see yours yeah. versus mine. So yeah. see how hers almost get it. Can you get a little closer to the camera? Um, see how yours almost come all the way together and yeah. they're completely straight. Whereas this one, they're kind of cut away a little bit. And so it's yeah. actually wider space here at the bottom than the top. So, so for me to put popsicle sticks in here was harder to get yeah. to work. So <laughs> this is designed so that you can sort of insert the metal, squeeze it and, and roll. Right. So with, for a tube of paint and it rings out the right. tube of paint. This also works great for toothpaste. Um, but right. uh, it's meant to be, you're meant to hold it in one hand, put the tube in and then and turn roll. It and roll it. Okay. We were trying to figure out a way that we could put it in a vise and use it mm. to roll like longer pieces of wire so that you would have one hand could hold the be pulling the wire out and guide, right. guiding it in, and the other one could be turning it. The only way you could do that to do a longer piece is if it were fixed into a vice or something. Yeah. But if and you use it as a vice and you put it 
tight on the vise, it won't turn because it's like the rollers are touching. So you've got that's hence the need for the popsicle sticks. You got to have yes. the popsicle sticks to give you some space. Yeah. So the popsicle sticks in there and you could use like a paint stick or something. You just want to get it set up to and I tested it with like one, two and then three popsicle sticks um, to get the right separation for the metal gauge that I was using. But once I got it in there and um, it's right over here so I can show you. But you've got ears right in front of you. You want to show them. Yeah, yours I, can do, I can do this one while you're getting yours set up. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Let me tip this down. I'm just going to tip my thing down. So, um, oh, thank you. So, of course, I can't see the computer, so I can't see what I'm doing. But um, so I have this basswood. I have some pieces of basswood, and you can see I've had it in here for a little bit, so it's actually kind of squished it. But uh, I figured out that it needed to be about there, roughly. I was put some marks on there, and so then I popped it in here back up a little bit oops my computer so i popped it in here like so oops actually i'm gonna go the other way around um because you have to have the wood not get in the way of the handle it's all part of the plan let's see if i can get this more or less right okay so see this piece of wood has to not impede the turning of the handle and then this was one of the advantages to me of having this metal part because my vice is fairly narrow. And so I don't think I could have held um, the one that Jennifer has. Jennifer has a wider, has a vice with wider jaws. So I put this in like so, so that I could do it with two hands. And then I can turn this with one hand. Actually, I think I need it. Here's, here's where you get into the fiddly bit and it would help if I had here it is. Good. Do I'm just pulling it. I'm pulling my stick up a little bit to make it push it out and open it up a little more. Okay. So that's a little bit. All right. And so then here's my piece of wire. This is just bezel wire. This is 28 gauge bezel wire. So I'm going to put this in here. And so this was our whole thing was to try to get it to the position where you could turn it with one hand and then feed it through with the other. You can see it coming through. And then you have this nice zigzag crimp. Right. Yeah. And uh, and if you wanted to, you could confirm some of these little crimps a little more. So, yeah. Okay, so that's mine. Um, I think mine, I, th I think Jennifer's with the popsicle sticks is probably easier than mine with the basswood. Um, so yeah, there it is. All right. You ready for this? We've got some, there it is. Hello. All right. So, hi. So what Hello. I did, <laughs> what You're I've so done cute. is, <laughs> I'm trying. Um, so with mine, can you see the vice that I've got here? Yeah, her vice is a little wider. Yeah. So this one's kind of nice because I can pop this whole thing in here. And I've right, because it's actually sticks. grabbing onto the vertical parts of the handles. Yeah, right. So when I close this, it closes it nice and tight. And there's nothing in the way underneath, which is kind of yeah, nice too. Which is good. But it acts like got in the way of mine. Yeah, but it acts like a, a pasta mill or a rolling mill. Yes. So then, whoa, look, at that. look at that. Look at that. What? Right. So this gives me a really nice little little zigzag that is, um, so if I'm using it for uh, filigree or if I'm using it for vessels or decoration or whatever, it gives me a really nice zigzag. The thing that I did find when I ran the, um, uh, I ran some uh, 18 gauge through the rolling mill first, mm -hmm. and the edge on this is nice and round and smooth. Um, and so for filigree, I really like this mill with the 16 gauge round wire, flattened, 18, gauge. 18, 18 gauge. gauge, sorry, 18 gauge, and then flattened. And, um, yeah, cause it, the edge is nice and round and pretty. This can be a little bit sharp. Um, so if you want like a, a real hard square to edge, this could be better with sheet. Um, and, uh, but you know, for filigree, this is going to be really, uh, a nice, a nice pattern making tool. So I really like this. Um, 
so yeah there we go there's mine um and you know for eight bucks you cannot beat eight bucks with a stick right no. like really people it's with a with a popsicle stick with a popsicle <laughs> stick i mean really it does uh, yeah. what you want it to do it's got plenty of room you know even if you're not yeah. holding it in a vice, I think you could you could hold it in one hand, in, a, in your hand and then feed it through. You know. Yeah, I have to tell you, since we got these, um, no no piece of scrap wire or bezel is <laughs> <It's> safe. <laughs> no piece of scrap wire or bezel is safe in our studios. Yeah. So anyway, but yeah, and this is really nice because it folds flat, and I can put it in the drawer and it's done. You know, I it's lightweight and easily storable and. I use popsicle sticks in the studio all the time anyway. I, for this, for sanding, for Mitsuru that I was mixing up earlier, um, they have great stirring sticks uh, for mixing up my glue for all kinds of things. So do I need popsicle sticks? Yes, you do. So go get some. All right. I'm going to come back over here. There we go. And talk to you on camera on the other side. So... Let's go back over here, buddy. Here we go. Remove the spotlight. There we go. Hi. Here we are. <laughs> Hello. So, so I'm um, going to just try this. Actually, I haven't tried doing it, just holding it in my hand, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, I've tried it that way, too. Yeah. Um, because the whole point, the whole advantage of holding it in your hand is that you can change the pressure. You can let it open up or, or be right. tighter if you want it to. That so. can also be... Uh, I mean, that's the design that's designed to be held that way. But I find that if I put it into the, the vise, I get a really even and even zigzag. Oh, Julia. Yeah, the problem is then you can't catch it. You know, you can't hold it. Yeah, yeah well, it's, it's just giving you an extra hand if you're using the vise. So, yeah, yeah. it's, it's yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it. It isn't. <laughs> no, no piece of scrap wire is safe in my studio. No right piece now. of scrap wire is safe, right? Like I have a whole coil of bezel wire, and it's like you know, by the end of the day, it could all end up looking like this. <laughs> well, yeah, two two ounces of zigzag bezel wire. <laughs> right. It's like I, I'm going to have to make some filigree now that I've zigzagged all this bezel wire. Yes. Yes. So, well, now I've been zigzagging. I've been I've been doing little short pieces because I've just been doing little tests. But obviously, yeah. if you were actually making a piece you might want to do longer ones so that you can yeah. into the size of the thing that you're so working. so i can show you this too this is um let me get ooh, over here there we go um so you can see this oh uh, yeah, yeah this is good hold on let's uh spotlight boop. you hold on there it is boop, hold on Oops. Oh, there, it is. there we go so um so this is a really traditional uh zigzag filigree pattern and um, so using the 18 gauge milled to about 24 gauge and then using the tube crimper. So it gives you um, a really lovely pattern that's like a, a zigzag back and forth or almost diamonds. So when it's all soldered down, it gives a, a beautiful pattern. So this is usually used with like two around the outside edges of pieces or um, Michelle Lear does a beautiful job with the way that she crimps hers and uses this pattern and um, also uh, milk fish vine. Both uh, mm -hmm. do really beautiful zigzag pieces. Um, but it is a traditional uh, pattern for like around the outside edges of pieces. Um, but, you know, finding, you know, the right size uh, zigzag and the one that works best for you is, um, can be challenging and you have to do a little bit of experimentation. And I know that uh, Michelle has done a lot of research and uh, working on her uh, particular style of zigzag. But um, but yeah, so anyway, I found this one works really well for me. That's a mess, Julia, turn that off. Um, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, it's uh, there's all kinds of, you know, really great uses for this. It's great for ring patterns. It's great for all kinds of stuff. So, um, but yeah, it's a lovely traditional uh, filigree pattern. It's um, really lovely in things like um, uh, cloisonne. You can do beautiful cloisonne. So if you're doing like, you know, wanting to do like a little chrysanthemum, you know, rolling it up looks hey, beautiful. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. You have to hold it up a little closer. Okay. There we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's like coiling it mm -hmm. um, to make a really beautiful little like chrysanthemum shape. Chrysanthemum. Um, um, for so you know there's all kinds of ways that you can use this that make it you know 
uh, really lovely. So, anywho. So there you go. There so you go. The, so ten dollar, the ten dollar the ten dollar bringer from uh, Amazon, which I will put exactly. uh, I will put in the description. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video okay. when we get done. Right, um, yeah. I mean, I'm I can sure put a link to the one I got too. But um, yeah. well, the nice thing again is the, the two printer one. is the tube crimper can be used for sheet. It can be used for wider pieces mm -hmm. uh, for doing the microforming, for doing the filigree, for doing patterning. Um, and I mean, if you're doing something like the uh, the cloisonne wire, you know. This guy's great. These are great. And you don't have to spend a lot of money, but, um, and they'll give you a finer zigzag. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing filigree that's, or a cloisonne that's very small and you want something a lot more delicate, you might want to get something like this that gives you really thin, beautiful wire. Um, this, you know, only goes up to about half inch. Uh, and, and for thicker sheet, it's just kind of like going pink, 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 pink across the surface. It doesn't give it a, a deep zigzag. You've got to use some pretty fine metal for this. Yeah. I mean, really what it does on the finer ones, I have the little samples here. Really, yeah. I'm here's what I would say the usefulness of the really fine ones would be. I could turn on my um, document camera and show you. Yeah. Uh, is Because the edge of it almost looks like the edge of twisted filigree wire. Yeah. Right? So what I would probably do... Oh, let's see. Hold on. Actually, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do it the way you told me to do it. Okay. So, um, come here. Get the focus. The camera's backwards. It's weird. Okay. So <laughs> you can see this one is a fairly fine one. Yeah. And you can see that the, um, it doesn't really zigzag it that much, right? Yeah, like, it's more serrated. Right. And so this one is a little more zigzaggy. Yeah. Right? And that's this, the, this one the, was done with the wider, widest one. That's the one or the stack? That's the stack. And this oh, was also okay. done with the stack. And so was this. So these two are the finest two pieces that were done with the stack. So yeah. what I would say with this is that if you were going to make faux filigree wire you could make you could take plain round wire run it through the rolling mill and then run it through the this and you would get enough of a little serration on the edge that it would look when you wound it up like filigree wire even yeah. if it's not because this isn't two sheet two pieces of wire that's been twisted together right 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 so because so you know it's just a flat sheet so it yeah. could be narrower. It doesn't have to be this tall, but it yeah. would get that impression from the top edge. Sorry, I keep moving in and out. It would give the impression from the top edge that it's filigree wire. Yeah. 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 So that I think would be the utility of hold up the um the paint tube ringer. So just for scale, so people can see the the difference between those massive difference between those sizes right okay so this is what was done with the the one we were just showing you the paint, the paint tube crayon. this is the finest of the stack ones is that the same gauge yes this is all identical wire and then this is bezel? this is all 28 gauge bezel wire okay and then uh i think this was the next one sorry like so, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard to hold them. I think this is the biggest one. Hold on, let me see if I can. Yeah. So the, those are all from the the stacked mill, the four option stacked mill. Right. Large, small. But you can see how much bigger that paint corrugator. Yeah. Is. So the top one here, paint tube corrugator, is the paint tube corrugator. Yeah. And then all well, the other. The nice thing is, it does give you this. It gives you well, a I, vocabulary of options. Yes, it does give you a lot of different options. Um, and then the paint tube bringer, I was also able to do this, right? With This was like yes. 23 gauge copper sheet. Yes, so. that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I was able to run my uh, piece of wire that I was playing with earlier, sheet that I was playing with earlier, 
through a couple of times in different directions. Yeah. And, oh, yes, yes. And that's the advantage. That's one of the advantages of these guys is that it's wide enough that you can take something this wide. You can run it through a couple different directions and get interesting patterns on it. And you'd have enough, right. you know, if you have a three, right. two, if you have a two and a half inch square piece of metal, you can run it through a couple different ways and you can get some really cool patterns. So it definitely has, hold on a second, yeah. let me spotlight you. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, this one has got um, this, you know, really lovely back and forth, you know, sort of. Right. Angle. They ran it through the other in the paint tube bringer. And so, you know, this is definitely thick enough for doing something like enameling and, you know, using it for right. stuff like that. So right, right. lightweight, uh, like foil material. Exactly. So, if you're doing something like that and cutting it out, doming it and enameling it, it gives you all kinds of crazy texture for the right. surface. So this could be a lot of fun. Uh, with I don't know. I would start if I were, if I were recommending what to do, because, okay, we've now talked about half a dozen different tools. I would probably say buy the $10 to bring her that Jennifer bought. Start with that because it's yeah. fairly, it's fairly good size you know so you can actually fill a fairly good sized area with it you know right. and then try your filigree with that and see if you like it if you really like the zigzag thing maybe it's not your thing the geometric stuff but if you really like it and then you want more options then consider buying the stacked one yeah. right because that will give you more sizes but yeah. it also the smaller you go the more fiddly everything yeah. is going to be right? well and and i would say if you're doing something like uh, cloisonne and you really want to do like floral petals and and shapes and forms and um are using like the wire for the cloisons that would be brilliant for that um you may not some, need something as big as the paint tube but the cloisonne wire is i thought i had some here but I yeah, the cloisonne wire that i was working with is it's so delicate um, it's not going to be right. good. For, How thick is cloisonne, cloisonne wire is usually like 30 gauge, isn't it? Yeah. And it was just teeny yeah, tiny. Um, and like, you know, if you had the thing too tight, it would like cut it as it went through. And just like snip <laughs> it off. And then you, then you would melt those little pieces up and make granules out of them. Right. Exactly. Right, yeah. silver, don't never throw it away. Cause you can use it for something. Exactly. exactly. So um, it was like clipping it in perfect, like one millimeter pieces. Um, so if you're using something like fine silver wire, round, uh, maybe 22 gauge, milling it down. So it's maybe 24, 26 gauge and running it through something like this for cloisonne, for uh, little details on filigree, using it to the surface. Um, you could get all kinds of really cool patterns out of this one too. Yeah. But, but yeah, I definitely like, for what I'm going to be doing, the paint tube bringer. The $10 paint tube bringer. You yeah. don't need the $40 paint to bring it. Nope. This one was fun to play with for a minute. It was $6. So. <laughs> but it was also really fiddly because you couldn't really hold it down and it kept like the the kept falling off. And I did put it in the vice, but the handle did keep falling off. Because <laughs> seriously, it's like a Kinder Egg toy, you know? <laughs> yeah. Which are fun. But, but it is purple. Yeah. It's that going it's for it, but it's purple. Matches. Yeah. Um, so we both yeah. love purple, so you know. Well, yeah, and we've got all kinds of, um, I've got the filigree class coming up here on the weekend. Of... Yes, this was all about Jennifer's filigree class, right? It was like helping people, you know, get excited about that because it's like right. she went down the rabbit hole of filigree yes. fun. Filigree we, fun. We went down the rabbit hole. We did. So, we did. I yes. happily went down that rabbit hole with you, girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I think that if you've got... Um, I wish I could see the chat. Can we see the chat? Uh, let me Hi, people. Um, go over to yeah. it. Where are you from? <laughs> Give us a shout. We're in Seattle. Hello. Oh my gosh, I have to sneeze. Um, so yeah, if you can uh, check the chat there and see. I'm looking to see. Hold on a second. Okay. It's always, it's always a trick to find it. All right. I have to go there and then I have to open it and then I have to turn it, turn the audio okay. off. So anyway, um, but yes, I have the filigree class coming up uh, the weekend of September uh, 9th and then the following weekend. So uh, two parts. Um, we're gonna the first part we're gonna be doing the frames and fill and talking about some traditional patterns uh, that we use to do filigree and from all over the world. Um, and 
then the following weekend, we're going to be filling, putting it all together, soldering it, shaping it, and uh, doing that. So it's two weekends with different information and giving people time to sort of assemble the parts, get it all ready to go so the following weekend they can assemble. Um, the other thing I would recommend, too, is that anybody um, that is working on stuff, they have questions um, uh, and or problems, issues, you're working in the studio all by yourself, you just want some feedback, you want to share some information with somebody, we are doing open studio access. So if you go to, and it's live uh, from all over the country, there are people that are in the, the class right now that are um, really interesting. They're not, uh, not your regular beginning people that are, um, they're sort of, um, some of them are intro, intermediate level people, but we do have some people that are a little more advanced. And, uh, but they come in and, and drop in anytime during the month, during our scheduled studio hours. You can um, ask us questions, you can share information, you can network. It's a great community for that as well. So um, we do that. We started doing that in August. No, we started in July. We started in July. Sorry. Yeah, we started in July. Oh, that's right. We started in July. And it's been um, for whole months. So it's just been incredibly successful with the students that we've got. Um, that are, like I said, from all over the world that want to drop in and ask questions and get some mentoring. And right. we found that this was the best way to be able to be like, we have office hours. We're going to be right. in our studio. If you've got technical questions, drop in, ask us questions. Um, if you you know, took a class and you're like, I need some follow-up, drop in. And we basically decided to take what is less than one hour of one-on-one -on -one mentoring and divide it up amongst many people um, and make it affordable so you can drop in and ask a question and you get 20 hours uh, during the month, at least 20 hours of the month. And a lot of times it's me and Julia or me and Helen or Helen and mm -hmm. Julia or yeah. so there's usually a few of us in there that can um, you know, brainstorm with you and stuff like that. So I would highly recommend it if you did are. You, uh, did you mention the accountability buddy aspect? The accountability buddy thing. Yeah. So if you're working on a project, you've got shows coming up, um, you're trying to prepare and you need some like, you know, help. You just need some, it. it's like co-working space, right? So it's like yep. company while you're working. So you're at your bench, you know, a bunch of people come and they don't even necessarily have questions, but yep. they always, you know, they're working away. You can see them working away. And then, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll toss out an idea or a thought or ask a question yeah. as things go along. So. Well, and the thing is that everybody is sort of like taking turns and asking different questions. And it's uh, just so much information that people are sharing, which is really cool because right. we've got we do have a Padlet. We, we have, say, Padlet. have a Padlet so that everybody can sort of share the information there. So we have a, like a bulletin board outside right. of the open studio that you can go and post stuff, videos, and, and so on. Right. So there's a place where everybody's connecting outside of the open studio as well. Right. So it really has built a, an amazing community of people that are, you know, working together, sharing information, giving honest feedback, you know, helping out. And we also have uh, had a number of artists uh, stop in and say hi. And like, we have uh, more planned for the future. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, and guest people. So yay. Uh, so there's a lot of lot of fun in the classes and surprises and you know all kinds of good stuff. So yeah, we've had Eleanor Modi and uh, Chris and we've got um, a few more people coming up. Yeah, so, we got. We don't want to say yet because you know we want to yeah. make it a surprise. But um, right. we do have some other friends and and you know cool people who are coming. So yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Well, All right. We need to wrap this up because I need to go eat dinner. I know. <laughs> Somebody else needs this, like, feed me right now. <laughs> so, I'm going to take him home and feed him immediately because nap time is, uh, is, is over. Pressing quickly. Yeah. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, I need to eat and go back to sleep. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, Join us again for Tool Tip Tuesday. We've got um, some really cool people coming up. And we're looking forward to sharing that with you. So uh, check out the website for all the upcoming classes. 
Um, if you are on the mailing list, we regularly have a discount code on the mailing list. Um, we have rewards for uh, classes taken. You actually get earn points and can take free classes. You can share the link with a friend and both get discounts on classes. So we have a that. referral link. So what, once you've once you've created your um, you, you you can make a, a little metal foxes account for free even if you don't buy anything and yeah. then um you can go in and find your personalized your per, your own personal exclusive unique referral code and if you give that to a friend and the friend signs up for something the friend gets a ten dollar discount and you get a ten dollar discount right so. so if you for example if you referred five friends you basically can take a class for free <laughs> pretty much yeah yep. so anyway or close to free um but yeah and then our okay. points too. so but yes, yeah there's any points. points on any on any any expenditures you earn yeah. points and then the and, points give you yeah and, you know, and check out check out point. our um our, our fun uh people that we have on our uh, reference because there are discounts through people like lion punch forge and right. a number of other uh, uh vendors of tools and contraptions that we do appreciate so um, you, you're always welcome to use uh, those codes for discounts. And um, absolutely, that's what they're for. They're for. Yeah. So check that out. But yeah, if you're not out. taking a class. You know, you're welcome. Yeah. And, 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 and hit, tell yourself. hit the like button. And if you haven't hit the like button, go hit that like button. And uh, if you subscribe and uh, join us there, and our uh, hit the notification bell, you'll we'll, you'll know when we are live and. Um, you can join us and ask questions live and see Simon Dog. There he is. Exactly. All right. All right. It's usually Maggie that's joining you. I've got Simon with me today. Yeah, no, <laughs> Maggie's Maggie's probably on top of the fridge. That's where she lives most of the time. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Anyway, he's telling me it's time to go. So everybody have a good night and we'll talk to you later.